Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm painting a little forest painting with just two colors. Yeah, just two. So first things first, this is the sketchbook that I'm going to use. So let's just get started. So I'm working with watercolors and these are the watercolors that I'm using and the brushes that I'm using. Also, as I just said in the beginning, I'm just using the two colors from this whole palette, only two. And those will be this one and this blue one. So today I use an old brush. I'm activating everything here because I don't have a clean place in my palette. So. Let me just show you the magic of the clean palette. So yeah, of course, I had to clean the palette. It was very messy. So the two colors that I'm using today are cerulean blue and raw umber. So if you mix cerulean blue, this is the blue color, and the raw umber, they give the green shade. So as you increase the blue color, it's the dark green. And if you increase the raw umber, it becomes the lighter green. So you'll, you'll see me using the different shades of green according to the painting. So stay in touch. Here I'm using more of the burnt umber for the background of my painting. So let's get started. To start off, I'm just wetting the paper for my wet and wet technique. See how colors are moving freely and there's no sharp edges. So that's why we use the wet on wet technique. Sometimes to clean off certain areas, I take the uh, clean brush, a damp clean brush and remove any excess water from it and then just wipe it across the wet paper that I already have and it creates that effect for my painting for the background I want like light trees that are very distant so nothing too like too concrete just it's like so misty and all to create that effect I'm again working on wet on wet right now so it's like very very soft Now like we are gaining perspective, so I am using another shade of green, it has more umber to it as you can see, it has less of the greenish if tint, more of a yellowish, brownish tint you can say. So these are the trees that are like, they are very distant too, but not like that distant. Take this, do this, see, here's my tip for this technique, so if you're trying this, use an old brush, don't use your nail brush, it might uh, damage it, so use a very old brush so that it can have more texture and bristles are like a regular, that will add character to the painting. And then we will take this. But now we want it uh, in a very dark tone. Just look at how dark I am making it. So now we are moving on to the closer trees. So I am taking the green that's very dark. So it has less of umber and more of the cerulean blue in it. So it has the greenish, clear greenish tint. You can see the difference between the green. Here's another tip, don't try and make the tree straight. That was something that I always did when I was like younger. I didn't know that. So always try to make trees as wavy as possible because nothing is like too straight. Have you ever seen any tree that's too straight? There's no way. I don't know how many of you have done it, but when I was younger, I used to make tree using a scale, a ruler. 
so there were two lines and that was the bark and that's it i'm so embarrassed right now so this is the tree that's in the foreground it's the biggest tree in this painting this is how i'm changing the size of the trees as they come closer that will give you the perspective and depth to the painting show of the light source with a clean brush as it, right now the paint is wet i'll take off some of the wet so it gives me a direct indication of where my light is coming from now just use lines and make branches and that's it it's almost done Also, we're going to add some leaves and uh, grass bushes in the foreground because all of those are in the background. So we have to, I have to do that also. So that's it guys it's very easy you can also do it uh, I hope you try it out and happy painting and thank you so much for watching this video like subscribe if you like this video take care bye and see you soon